Hey, welcome to another build video, guys. Uh, just a bit more work on the uh, on the tornado one to forty eight. No, I'm actually enjoying this. Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun doing this. So and I'm going to try something different again. I'm still playing around with the settings on my channel. Um, something that works for me and quick. But um, man, it's easy. So so I'm just sort of working out which cameras to use for what videos. So reviews and things. I'll use a good camera just for builds like this. I use my webcam, and obviously for the Google Plus. Um, hangouts and live builds use a webcam, but the webcam seems to yeah go alright I think. So where we left off last time, um, part two I think. Yeah, we're basically just gluing this thing go together. Um, now you probably sort of half half see it now, but the um, now wings go back together, and then you got the pylons that move around, but these are getting glued in so. Um, I'll probably have it sort of set mostly folded back but when it does move so it's, I guess it's just going to be mainly me, and me playing with it um, so it's really not going to matter where where the um, pylons face but just don't want to lose them you know I like don't want to break off and all that hard work sort of going in for it when they break off and I'm um, don't know about the stabilizers at the back. Still may glue these in. Um, mentioned all this in the last video, part two. And of course, you got to crack in out. You can actually see probably a bit better. Um, there's a big, big gap in there which I've got to fix. And all, yeah, especially all in here. There's just heaps of gap filling to do. Um, <clears throat> so that's that. And I've also, also got to, you know, like the jets are big or. The, um, the jet nozzles are haven't been glued in yet because I'm going to paint them separately with all clads and then um, yeah, that way I can just bang them in there. Uh, all the cockpit, this is um, what I was trying to show in the last video, but it's just that blurry. Um, you can't really see it, so, so I've treated all the seats. All the panels, um, the cockpit tub, uh, just with a bit of with um, Flory Models black clay base wash, and it's really really good. So, so that's had a few days to dry now. I've just had no time on the bench, guys. So, just been real busy. I've got a couple of hours tonight, so I may as well just try and take advantage of it, and then go to work tomorrow for. A few, um, Three or four hours. Yeah, Saturday work, so yeah, just get out there, do a few loads, and then um, come home and build because I've not had a chance to build for the last three weeks. Well, oh, just those little videos, those live builds, was um, the only time I've actually had to build. So as soon as I get a chance to build, that's why it's those videos are live because um, I just have that just like that um, bit of time there on my hands so I just jump at the opportunity to make a video but I've got a bit more time since it's like weekend coming up I can sort of have a bit of time to edit this as well so I'm just going to chop this there's the um, Citadel ones, big chunky ones uh, these are good they just get in there and they just hack it up right. <clears throat> so let's see how this Flurry Models wash comes off. So what I might do is just get some water from the brush. Plain old water. Yeah, 
there. So I'm just basically hitting the top surfaces like with the um, tissue. You don't really get in the recesses, and it comes off very easily with water. So that's what I've been after for a while. The black clay based washing just get rid of this easy without having to muck around with thinners and just getting the cotton wool. Oh, sorry, you have a really dry throat tonight. Just getting the um, Q-tip. Bit of water on it, not too much. If you think it's a bit too much, just sort of soak it off with the paper towel. You just want it just damp. You don't want it saturated. If you don't want the water to penetrate in the recesses, that's what you don't want to take out. You want to leave it all in there. That'll do for now. You can see how easy it comes off. It's just yeah, a bit of water and chuck it in there. Yeah, it's pretty much the same technique if using the um, UMP washers as well. Slap it on, let it dry, and just with a damp um, paper towel or q tip. And um, yeah, just only damp, and you just keep taking it away. Don't take too much off. You can just put more on. Nice and easy. Yeah, this takes a while, this technique, so you just got it. So you see, getting it. Here all the wash is just left in behind. Then we're still going to paint over it yet, touch it up a bit more. Take some more water. And we've also treated the seats with this wash as well, so actually one on the front. The one I tried to get the wash behind the seat belts there. So if, if I'm successful and not putting too much um, water on the paper towel, it should work out alright. So I'll just show you the back. That's before I've kind of wiped it. And this is wiping it down. So you can always go back to where I showed you. Yeah, so if you want to go back and pause it where I actually showed you um, the seat treated and then come back to here or vice versa, you'll see the difference. Yeah. yeah it's a good, good technique if you're new to washing, um, you've thought about using enamel washers. And you're a bit scared to do it. Like it's not hard using normal washers, but you know if you want to start washing your models this way, you can simply just make a um, a sludge wash using pigments, soap and or dishwashing liquid and water. And so you're basically using the dish dishwashing liquid as a flow aid. It just helps break um, surface tension with the water and lets the wash go all the way through it. I mean, you don't need much of that. So mainly it's ma mainly made up of um, pigments and water and you just need like the tiniest bit of detergent in there and you basically made yourself a wash yeah I thought I'd just bring the closure in a bit more just change uh, change the tripod so so that's what it looks like there I'll show you the other one too I just use the that's all I use there just Humbrol acrylics um, dark yellow matte Ah, uh, so, yep, there they are. So just use a bit of flat light grey. I think I base coated this with, um, I colored this ghost grey. So I use a bit of flat light grey. Let's give this a shake up. We should have a ball, a sinker in the bottom somewhere. 
Yeah, it's been a while since I've used this one. Right, so we've just got a it's got a bit of that grey on the palette there. And it's got some tissue. And we've got number two, uh, just a flat brush from Tamiya. It's an old dry brush I've had for years now, so that's just a so what we do is we get a bit bit off the palette. And you'll take as take heaps off your brush. We test it on your skin. You can just see it on your skin, that's good. How much a little bit more on there. I'm just getting to practice on. I'm just using the edge of the brush. I'm just gonna so you just want to do the edges with dry brush. I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna bring the brush from top um, bottom to top. It's just going to be from top to bottom. And then don't worry about all this black at the front here. We can just go over that with a bit of paint because I want to freshen that up anyway. I took a little bit of paint off when I was um, scrubbing off the wash. I don't know if the camera picks up. You can probably just see the difference in there. That's the one that we've just highlighted and that's the one we're about to. Sort of trying to not get any that grey paint and try not to dry brush the actual seat itself. So just by adjusting the angle of your brush, just dragging it down, it should be okay. Alright, so that's them highlighted. So what I'm going to do, just while I'm waiting, to try and clean this up a bit more, I think. And so you start to see that the um the wash is starting to come away from focuses. I'll just let it down, put it down there. Focus is there. And that's just the other one that's there. So I might just give all this a quick seal up. So just getting our tape. <clears throat> do the roll it up. And stick it on here. Decent size one for the cockpit tub. And make sure that it goes on both ways. And it does. So I like the tape on there. Fairly clean underneath. Stick it down. Get the seats as well and just stick them down. So there you go, I'm going to stick with some paint stuff really quick. Get some paper, I'm just going to put down the unprotective bit of paper so I don't spray my bench. What I've also got, so I've got, yeah, just got a bottle of um, Vallejo uh, matte varnish, but just thin down two parts water, one part varnish, just 50-50, or, sorry, two parts water and one part varnish. So I'm just going to put a bit in the cup. And just spray. All I'm doing here is just sealing in the, um, the wash, so make sure 
you get you've gotten all the wash off that you want because as soon as you put this mat down you're not going to get it off it looks like it's going on thick but it's yeah, it's a very very diluted mixture and that yep so we let that dry now let it dry so the mat coat should be dry now <coughs> Yeah, it's been given a bit of time and so what we're going to do with this um, with this with this cockpit here you can see that all the wash is all dried the mat coats dried and you've just got a very heavy shadow amongst all the controls all the panels all the recess lines of taking that wash really well guys so we should be right to pull this off now and also I've got um, this one here, which I will, which I'll leave. But what I might do is, as I'm just getting this old cruddy um, bit of clear plastic that come from a DVD or CD spool of blank discs, and I'm just going to go back and get some more of this tape, this 3M tape here. Just going to cut a little bit off. You know, don't need much. Because all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that one of the panels off the um, off my painting stick. Yeah, just mind my dirty hands too, guys. I've just finished work, so weekend time for me. So and then all right, so we just got to stuff down there. She ain't moving, so it's going to be it's going to be very easy for me to paint. Um, so what do we got? So we're just looking through here. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to get some green. Is so I'm going to start off with um, Vallejo's flat green 968, just in the radar screen here, and then I'm also just going to give it a highlight with the uh, game color. Oh, it's the light green here. So we should use these two colors here. This one seems really thick. Typical game colour. <clears throat> so. What do we do? I think my airbrush needle. I'm just going to stick it in there and try and break up the bottom a bit. Loosen off this um, little ball that's down the bottom. For a while, because I used to, used to bought this paint because I used to paint orcs a lot. But ever since buying the um, the Taller acrylics, I've got three colours now that are just mainly used for my skin on the orcs. So this one's still pretty much brand new. So yeah, so the Karen decided to play silly buggers in, decided to shut itself off. Just gonna give that a bit more of a stir. Just wipe this off. You can hear the ball inside's loosened itself up now, so it's gonna be doing its job. And it is a good idea to put um little agitator balls in the bottom of your balls of paint too because what happens is is because you are mixing them up properly um, and what you'll find is if you don't shake them up properly and like all the paint itself all the pigment or the paint sits at the bottom and you have all your your medium like um, that the pigment suspends itself in if that's not mixed up properly you'll end up just having this big thick goop down the bottom of your um, bottom of your bottle or your jar whatever you use and that's when you find that your paint starts drying out and yeah your paint, your paint becomes no good so you've got to pretty much either chuck it out or try to retune your paint by thinning it back out again with thinners so just a drop there all you need is one drop and just get out So 
what you want to do is just carefully put the green in there so I'm not going all the way to the edge I'm still leaving some of the shadow from the wash in there which is why I, I added the matte coat because with the flurry model any any clay based wash all the new washes that are starting to come out now um, they they become reactivated with uh, water well, as soon as you wet them they just reactivate and then you'll end up just having black really dark paint which is, which what is what you don't want so you can see there that the green not just the screen there is um just there so we're just gonna let that dry just enough on the bottom there just so it picks up a bit of light and there's a bit of definition in there but you can all, if you want, you can just add a bit of green, dark green to the mix, to your brush. Just to have a mid-tone in between there somewhere, so you don't have such a harsh line. And, um, I'm just going to blend those two together. So you've pretty much got three shades of green in there. I don't know if you can see it. Okay. And then just having a look at all the other controls. Uh, so they pretty much are going to be black. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab one of my um, I'm just going to grab one of my eye makeup brushes. And then I'm just going to give it a bit of a wet down. I'm just going to grab a sharpie and I'm just going to. That's heaps easier. So I'm just going to get my sharpie and just draw, like, put little black dots in there. And then with a the sharpie, you got more control too. You don't, you don't run the risk of um, your bristles bending. On your brush and um, just having uneven circles. And just as with the bigger ones, you can sort of just draw little circles on there. So I'll bring it down there to see what I'm doing. So as you can see, there all the the controls of this being drawn in and then now just with um, artistic license you can just go around if I just get a what I might do here because I don't really want red uh, bright red buttons Reaper hate um, just Reaper uh, what is it it's rusty red just one of their HD paints, really good for detail work. So just going to give it a shake. And this stuff's really, really thin too as well. Nice thin paint. Generally it's one, one application, like one coat application. So, oops, bit of paint on the book. Put a drop there. So I've just got the tiniest drop just there, that's all we're using. Now we just go with the controls. I mean, you can just be, you don't want to paint every button red. But, um, it's just to break up the grey. So I'm just doing these switches, just make them red. Button here as well, red. Let's get a little 
deaths are right on there. And then just to break it up a bit more, I'm just going to grab some white. So I've just got some matte white from Humbrol. Just give that a little shake. And this white here is quite thin as well. So just going to go around. I'm just painting. Just, just trying to go for all the round. All the round switches. There's going to be some two that are going to be black. So just sort of having a look. Making sure. I mean you can leave. I mean this is. I'm not going by any pictures here. I'm just wanted to see what colour the screens were. The dials. But uh, majority of these. The rest are going to be black anyway. So. Um, Because it is such a dark wash that's in between the recesses. If I put black on all the controls, it's just going to be a black panel, which is what I don't want. I want a bit of detail on the cockpit. Do them a bit brighter, so when you look, when you do look through the um, glass, yeah, there is a bit of detail in there. So you see, that's just coming on nicely there. So that black paint, this Atelier Free Flow stuff, it's just um, just stuff I picked up from the art shop. I think it was like eight dollars a bottle, I think it was. So it's pretty cheap for what I want it for. It's just mainly detail work and um, pre-shading. Just a couple more buttons here and there. Just trying to leave like a little grey perimeter on the outside. So it looks like it's a recessed green. Just like that. Okay. Now, what I'm going to... And then while we're waiting for those... I'm just going to highlight this green, or the seats. Just going to use a bit of um, Tallery flat interior grey green. Main main paint stirrer, just a bit of old coat hanger wire. Just bent onto this old um, this little engraving tool. That's all I use it for now. Hasn't got a, hasn't got kinds of drill bits or anything, but doesn't really have the power to drill through. Sort the drill for. But it's great for stirring paint. So now that that's been mixed up, I'm just going to give it another shake. And, then, and all we're going to do here is we're just going to do the very, very edge. Just sort of taking off some of the paint on your skin. I'm just using the very edge of the brush. I'm just going to highlight the... Um, Sides the and try not to get it on the gr on the um, the grey on the sides. And we're not doing below. We're just sort of highlighting the parts where 
the sun will be hitting it. Let's get a bit more detail. And just a dash under here. And if you want, just a couple of little. So just like that. And that's what we need to do. So I'll put it in there so you can see it. And then just the same deal with the other one. So yeah. And I'm just going to re-highlight the headrest. Not re-highlight, repaint it. So I'm just going to grab a... Whatever I did with it. Gonna use a very very dark grey from a tallery. And this probably needs another mix too. Just get out the old stack. Yes, have a mix. So you can see it's just giving that a mix, it's just loose up the bottom as well, so this is what I was talking about before. So I'm gonna get a slightly wider paintbrush here. Let's get rid of. If you've never used this Atalari paint, I reckon go and get some if you can get it. It's a really really nice paint. And plenty of pigment in there. And if you use Vallejo paints it's pretty much yeah it's there's really much no difference the way it goes on so you'll be very comfortable using it it's just value for money i think just the size of the bottles that you get i think they're like 20 mils a bottle and they're actually cheaper cheaper than vallejo paints funny enough and I haven't had any problems with it. You can see how smooth it goes on as well. It just goes on really, really smooth on the headrest there. Yeah, you see there. And just trying to leave some of the wash in the recesses as well. We don't want to cover them up, so just come out just a fraction. Just so some of the recessed um, washed areas just remained washed. Alright, so. That's that done. And just making sure that they fit. I'm just carefully trying not to um, touch the paint that we just put on there. So that's that. You can slowly see that the cockpit's starting to come together. Do. I'm just going to put a bit of Tetra in there just to hold it in. Now what I've also done, uh, if you see, if you did watch my Tetra review, uh, Ian, Conway, um, Ian Conway Powers was kind enough to comment on that as well. And he does recommend decanting the Tetra into a smaller container or a smaller jar so you don't contaminate the rest of it. Pretty much like if you use extra thin after a while, your bottle goes cloudy just from the contaminant from the styrene, paints, whatever. So, I had just, I was, this bottle was just empty enough, so I was able to empty it, empty the rest of the um, extra thin into a new bottle, which is why it's a little bit cloudy, but you know, it doesn't, um, doesn't really bother me. It's just, yeah, there, so it's pretty much a full bottle now. And um, I've just relabeled this this one here, Tetra, on there. So you might think I'm using extra thin, but it's actually Tetra in there. Just keep an eye out for the um, the um, the Tamiya masking tape on here. That's the only way you can tell the difference, and the stickers all scratched up as well inside here. So and it doesn't, it hasn't hurt the um, actual brush in here as well. So if you end up do getting some, and I highly do recommend getting it. And like to be honest guys, I've I haven't even touched the extra thing since I bought it. So what I'm gonna do is just this makes it so much easier. Just using compiler reaction again. Put a bit much on there. 
just touching the sides so all I'm doing is just touching it might give it two hits you see it run down there and just give it a little press and already you can turn it upside down give it a shake and the parts held in place so and then also may as well while we're here I'm just going to glue these seats in so everything sort of dries together just going to give a little firm press down there just a test fit and that way if I do have to touch up the seats anymore or anything I don't have to touch the um, model so what we're going to do as you can see we've got a little access point down the back here where we can put our brush in there so we're just going to boom and one on the other side one two three and that should be held in place and I'm just going to double check just going to get an old cotton bud or a q-tip I'm just going to press it in there to say so everything sort of sits in there snug Okay, and we're just going to do the same with the other side, front seat. Just making sure that's all in there nice. Okay, so that's it, you feel it once it sort of, and I'm just going to if I can feed it in there just want to drop in there should do it and that's how quick and effective the Tetra is and this is why I always I've started using it a lot now so And just eats through the glue I mean eats through the paint and straight through the st straight into the plastic and within a couple of seconds you know you've got a part that's firm and guys like seriously I've looking over the actual the fuselage itself when I actually glued the tornado together and the str I mean no, like I was you know, like this thing doesn't even want to move so you can see just there, it's just it's just a full weld, and like this, yeah, this stuff just blows me away on how good it is. I've never had a glue this good before. So I think I found my new girlfriend, and she's called Tetra. And I've got a couple of other products to review too. I've got the um, the, the 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 Simply Glues Y6B acrylic thinners. I've got to do as well, but. Until I get to the painting stage, it's probably when I'll start doing the reviews on there, recording the reviews. <clears throat> so just bear with me. And if you are watching in, like yeah, I am going to do a review on it, so. But so far, very, very happy with your products, guys. Um, and go back to the ruler. Got our dark grey primer mix that I've made up, and a little bit of black. It's only about that much black in there, and all the rest is white. But you can always mix your own up, depending on how dark or light you want it. I just found that the Vallejo grey, grey is more of a white, so a light grey. So I just sort of mixed up the dark grey version of it. Same stuff. It's all polyurethane paint. Brush and just grab just some airbrush cleaner 50 50 water and airbrush cleaner 
that's so I can save a bit. Or you can use Windex, whatever you want. Don't need much in there, just a little tiny bit in that cup. In there. Making sure it's coming out. do is I'm going to um, use this flat dark gold grey I'm just going to dump a bit in here so what we're going to do is I'm just going to put a bit of thin through here only a couple of drops and then I'm just going to put some of this tallery paint in here probably three drops will probably do it but more than enough I'm not really too phasing, it's just these are just the back panels, especially this part here is back of the cockpit, so and, um, so I'm not gonna let that dry for the rest of the afternoon, which won't take long. So basically just paint all the details on the on these two panels here just got to do some little final detail I'm going to paint all that when that's once that's glued in place um, yeah so we've just highlighted and done all the, the buttons on the in the cockpit there I mean there's no photo which or anything in there so it's just a um, box stock um, cockpit there's no, <coughs> oh, excuse me, yeah, there's no extra fine details or um, scratch built parts that I've put in there. So, so far I'm pretty happy with it, um, like for a kid of its age. So we're just going to let that dry, put the rest of the panels in, and then we'll start putting the, um, the uh, fuse, or the, the nose of the aircraft together. Once we get all that done, then we can start yeah, assembling the aircraft, putting all the um, you know, the nose the nose weights already in there, stuck stuck down with Simtac 1000 from EDF Simply Glues. I'm just going to do you know, try and use as much of their products in this build as I can, just to sort of get a feel for it because it is new to me. And and before I start getting more comp complex kits. Yeah, I want to be very comfortable using their products and know what it can and can't do. And so far, there's not much that this can't do except for glue, fat, watching that together. But for plastic and styrene wise, yeah, 10 out of 10 for that. So we're going to be seeing a lot of that. But yeah, guys, I'll be back in a minute. Just going to let this dry. More well, five seconds for you, but probably be an hour for me. So see you in a minute. <laughs> 